So here's my RX-8. Here's no, my yeah. eldest child. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my RX-8. And there's my youngest child. <laughs> and this is my video about my RX-8 electric car conversion. Go all the way around. It's a Mark 1 RX-8. 2004, 231 brake horsepower when it was new. Um, I bought this on eBay because the engine had gone. It was cheap and in really good condition. All the sills have all been redone. There's no rust and the normal rusting spots around the back uh, where the boot, the boot brake light is. That's all no rust. The guy had the top resprayed. Still in contact with the guy I bought the car from. He, um, he's really interested in it being back on the road again because he loved this car and it is, is a great looking car. So I'm going to give you a bit of information about how I've converted it to electric. I've done it on a bit of a budget, otherwise I'd have to sell one of my children. This one here, or, or that one, I don't know which. Uh, so yeah, I've done the car on a budget. It's Mark 1 and um, there's going to be various iterations now, but before I take it apart, I've been asked by a few people to make a video to show what I've done. So as you might expect, I've had to take a lot of systems out of the car to convert it. Uh, obvious ones, no exhausts anymore. The exhausts are all out. Uh, fuel tank underneath the car, if I can get under there. Not sure that's going to show that very well, but uh, fuel tanks are out as well. As well as obviously the motor, all the radiators, oil radiators, water radiators, air conditioning radiators, uh, the motor itself, all the ancillary uh, systems, air in intakes, all gone um, because just don't need any of those. A huge amount of weight. Still got some of the bits and pieces lying around, but most of it's gone to the scrapyard now, and uh, and allowed me to put all my stuff in. So I've got the inside of the car. Um, I've done a few modifications in here. The the uh, car itself, the interior was in good nick, but actually the plastic along here had quite a lot of damage on it. So thanks to Darren Harris at Harris uh, Brothers. It's a car yard, I've uh, replaced the interior, so I've got a much nicer interior in here now. Uh, I thought with the effort I was putting in the car, I may as well, may as well do that. There's a couple of modifications if I come inside here. Um, you can see, let's just move that around. You can see here I've put in a voltmeter and a forward and reverse stick. Obviously the electric motor can go backwards or forwards, um, unlike a normal combustion engine which only goes forwards. Uh, if you put it in reverse, and actually put the gearbox in reverse, the car will go forward, which is quite entertaining. Generally, obviously, you're going to live in forward and, uh, and, in, and in a gear, and the car's going to move. Uh, if I turn the ignition on, we'll get a, a volt rating there. Uh, 113 volts, uh, batteries are about half capacity at the moment, uh, about 118 full, and to be honest, if you want to push them, probably about 90 uh, I can go down to before they cap out on me completely but the more you stress the batteries as I'm sure you know then uh, the, 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 the less they last so keeping them nice and healthy and topped up is the best thing to do. One of the biggest problems obviously of taking the engine out is the car is just going to complain about lots of sensors missing lots of everything missing you get a whole range of errors on the dashboard um, so to combat that I took out the main ECU of the car the main brains of the car because then it can't complain if it doesn't know what's going on Unfortunately, um, modern systems are quite clever, so still your ABS systems and stuff will, will complain because obviously, again, you've removed a lot of bits and pieces. So what I've done under here is made a few modifications. Um, I've got an Arduino here that I've programmed to emulate the signals that the ECU used to send out. Uh, did that by basically listening to the ECU that was in there, finding out the control codes, a lot of them that um, uh, it was using. And uh, the system's called CAN bus, a lot of cars have that. Uh, ABS, stability control, all those functions now work. And I'll show you the dashboard in a minute. I've got no error lights other than one actually on the dashboard at the moment. And um, what I also do with the Arduino is the input to the controller for the electric motor use a different signal range to what the car was giving out. Um, the, so I wanted to carry on using the throttle pedal of the car and here I power the throttle pedal with my own 5 volt battery, well not battery sorry, converter, inverter uh, from the 12 volt battery in the car. I take the signal from the throttle pedal into my Arduino and I modulate it into an output that goes to my controller which is in the right range that the controller wants. It was pretty cool because it means I can use the original throttle pedal in the RX-8 and continue to use the controller's own input without having to 
break or change or modify anything at either end it just modulates it in the middle there is an output a spare output from the throttle paddle it's got redundancy two outputs i'm only actually using one so it's not very very re redundant anymore um but i've got the arduino doing that as well so it's not only controlling all the cam bus and the error messages it's uh, controlling the throttle pedal um, but that's quite key because that allows the electric power steering to continue to work um, and all the other features in the car, safety features that you'd expect, airbags, all those kind of bits and pieces, uh, without risking any any uh, any errors. Also, MOTing the car, it um, you fail an MOT if you've got any error lights on the dashboard. So having that emulated means hopefully I can get this uh, MOT on the road. So I've got the dashboard now, and um, it's quite important to have to clear all your error messages because if you want a car to MOT. It has to pass, uh, it has to have no error messages on the dashboard. And uh, my Arduino does a pretty good job now of turning everything off. Um, and actually, it's not just turning the lights off, it's actually making the systems work. So, the ABS light, I've not just turned it off, it is actually working. The DSC is working. Uh, the uh, handbrake light there, it's, um, it's not as simple as just a light on and off, it's actually part of the ABS system. And again, if I rock the switch down here, it, it'll turn it on and off. Uh, keyless entry that's also working so uh, it knows it's got the right key mapped in uh, seat belts working and you can see the doors are open there so everything works as it's expected to I've just set the oil pressure and temperature gauges in the middle at the moment you can see it's running at about 900 rpm uh, that's because I've tricked the car into thinking the engines running uh, without that the power steering doesn't work and as you can see I've got I do have power steering at the moment so um, that's because I've tricked it to think of the engine's working. If the engine, if it doesn't think that, then systems don't don't work. So that's quite cool. Um, if anyone wants the Arduino code or the CAN bus stuff, I've got mountains of information to help anybody uh, get all that working if they need to. So back here, I've got the the rear battery pack. Uh, this is nine of the twelve batteries I'm using. These batteries aren't really very good. They're very old, out of an electric bus. Um, Old technology, new, the newer batteries will store about four times the capacity of these. So these batteries all together weigh about 200 kilos, which is really heavy. Uh, if you can imagine now, I could get probably just three of this capacity, or sorry, three of this physical size would store all of the capacity that I've got currently. Um, so it shows how far battery technology has moved. But um, I've got each one of these is roughly about 40 volts. Um, air, three in series give me 120 and then threes in parallel uh, with the three at the front as well giving me uh, a higher amp hour obviously more capacity and more, more, more options to go further behind here you can't see it obviously because the batteries are in the way there are two buzz bars which then send the power back through my double O cables um, and there's a charger in there as well that I can plug it into essentially a three pin plug and uh, charge the batteries at home only takes about four hours to charge, mainly because, as I say, these batteries are a bit rubbish. Um, they are they are reasonable though. I mean, each, each one has its own battery management system, so they they will um, balance themselves, but they won't balance with the other ones. I don't have the overall master controller for them, um, which is why you'll start to see some of these are flashing red um, because they are falling out of balance internally and with their partners and. Um, and that's partly why I'm not getting a particularly good range or capacity because these batteries have, have had it essentially but I picked them up cheap um, and they've done a job to allow me to get the car to this point to at least know whether I can actually build an electric car one of the next phases is to replace these um, probably with like a Nissan Leaf battery pack as I say I'll get four times the capacity for a lot less physical space um, so I'm just trying to pick up a, a broken leaf at the moment see if I can replace those with that In here's my motor, you can see the electric motor sat in there. Uh, I've had to fabricate two engine mounts for it, so there's the right hand one. You can't really see the left hand one anymore, it's underneath the uh, new battery holder, but it's it's equidistance obviously. You have to be a bit careful when mounting the motor, um, there's a special distance that the gearbox has got to be uh, in the drivetrain to make sure it's all flat so that you're not stressing the uh, drivetrain when you're putting torque on it and obviously the electric motor has a lot of torque so getting that aligned up was, was pretty key. This aluminium plate here is my adapter plate that I had fabricated, uh, got all the measurements for it and a local company made that for me. That adapts the electric motor to the gearbox that you can see back there. 
This is the old clutch cylinder. Uh, it's not in use, so I've actually taken the clutch out because um, uh, complicated, but the, I, could, I had no amount of flywheel on the new motor, so I had nothing for the clutch to push back against. Um, so that's, that's not in there anymore. But if I ever wanted to add it back in, I could do because the hydraulics are all here still, the pedal still works. It's just a matter of putting it back in. I very much doubt I will. Um, having the gearbox is handy that I can select what gear I want to be in, but uh, needing to change gear while driving along is not really that necessary. And actually the gearbox in the RX-8 is so damn good that um, you can change gear without the clutch anyway, pretty simply. And, um, and uh, I've done that many times already in testing. So there's the gearbox still in there, and there's the motor. So the front battery pack here, that's a quarter of the batteries in there. Um, as I described in the back, they're not particularly great batteries, uh, but they, they're doing a job for the moment. I've got an air switch here, it's about a 450 amp air switch. It switches on on the ignition of the car, so the high voltage is dead until you turn the ignition on, makes the contact, uh, then livens the buzz bar, which is plugged into the main controller here, which makes the, the circuit live. Um, the buzz bars themselves, thanks to Kerry Dunstan there for 3D printing me the plastic, um, I'd, I'd never make them again, They're absolute pain in the ass. Um, cutting the copper and drilling the copper to make those buzz bars, there's one there and there's two more around the back of the car, um, was just more effort than it was worth in the end. But uh, they're really good, they um, allow me to connect everything together safely. And um, I've also got over here just a, a standard, almost like a house fuse switch um, so if there is ever a short circuit then that'll trip and um, and not continue just in case some if you're in an accident or anything it would uh, it would cut out the the power obviously turning the ignition off over here will do that as well uh, standard 12 volt battery still in the car that's in a different place if you know the rx8 actually normally lives about here um, i've had to build down here this subframe is new um, I've welded that in place across the length of the car uh, in there as well. You can just see that. Painted it black just to stop it corroding and rusting. But that's allowed me to mount everything. So all this stuff along the line here is all mounted, including the bracket that's holding the battery, is all then sat on that new bit of fabrication because I just needed to needed the space for it. A um, little bit of wiring over here. Um, basically, all this is controlled by the uh, ignition. There's a little, another a relay there as well, controlled on ignition. That's just to power all the auxiliary things that I've got now, which is um, a replacement um, vacuum pump here. That's um, to, for the power assisted brakes, you need a vacuum pump to assist with the braking. So that's additional to the original vacuum in the car. And um, underneath the controller, there's fans to keep that cool as well. Uh, as well as obviously <laughs> the switch for the air switch and the power for the Arduino in, in the controller that powers everything up these days. I think that's pretty much it for the electronics. Um, there's all the wires here which go into the cockpit for the uh, reverse and forward switches and also the voltmeter as well um, and some power to the throttle pedal that's now powered by me and not the old ECU. This is for the power steering. Uh, power steering in the RX-8 is power assisted by electricity, not pneumatics, so that's quite cool. It means you can have power steering just through electricity, um, which is a lot easier just to essentially turn it on and off. You don't need any pumps or pulleys or anything like that to get it working. So there she is, the RX-8, fully electrified. Um, obviously, million dollar questions that I get asked repeatedly. How much have I spent? How fast will she go? And uh, how far will she go? Well. I've spent probably about four grand in total. So that's buying the car, motor, controllers, all the equipment as well. So that's hoists, um, materials required, tools that I didn't have, welding equipment, paint, everything, absolutely everything. I've kept a record of it all. It's about 4K, um, which to be quite honest is dirt cheap. You can spend four grand on uh, just the batteries alone. Uh, so four grand in total is where I'm at, at the moment. How fast does she go? Well, this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. Um, I didn't spend much on the motor and controller and uh, so top speed is roughly about 35 40 mile an hour at the moment um, range probably looking at about 10 miles so unfortunately not really that practical because you get to a hill and you're kind of limited to about 25 mile an hour uphill and uh, say 35 40 on the flat so with the 10 mile range you can't really go very far and you can probably get into town and back and uh, but it's gonna be a bit of a scary journey because you're gonna be continuously worried that you're gonna run out of power 
Next thing to upgrade really is the controller. There's my controller there. And realistically that's what's holding this back. Uh, the motor is a lot stronger than the, the controller can give it power. So the controller's cutting out um, under load and uh, it's basically limiting the car to about 35, 40 mile an hour as it stands. Replace the controller is the next thing. Um, it's gonna cost about 600 pound. Um, probably one of the bigger investments in the whole car but that should potentially give me maybe even twice the power, um, which really will make it a much more drivable machine. Once that's upgraded, if that really does uh, do, as, do as I expect it to do, then the next hit list is the, uh, the batteries. As I say, I'm probably gonna get a Nissan Leaf um, and uh, start to take that apart. Potentially, I could also use the Nissan Leaf's motor in, uh, as a replacement motor as well. Eh, I might do that, might not. We'll see what happens. Controller first, then batteries, then potentially a bigger motor. Uh, well, not actually bigger, just more powerful. The motor I've got is actually physically very big. Uh, modern motors, unbelievable, like the battery technology. You can get 300 horsepower for a device that's, that's tiny. Uh, really incredible stuff. But um, you wanted to spend about 10 grand on a motor and a controller, and uh, 10 grand on batteries, you can get a 300 horsepower RX-8. Maybe, maybe I'll get there and do that, but right now, it's baby steps. Upgrade the controllers next. Let's make this into a car that can, uh, can be drivable on the road with a, with a decent range.